Hello and welcome to Infinity. We're going to look now at a number of different ways that opacity can be used because opacity is effectively another blend mode because it blends two layers together. So the first one, very simply, we're going to go to the layer and put in a new fill layer. So it starts off at the default color there, happens to be black. And we'll start off with a color and choose like a nice sort of orangey color. Now we want to blend it in. We could just straight away pull down this but it's yeah it's it's not a great effect overall so you need a blend mode so i'm going to go from there to normal and go down to soft light which is usually a good one and here we go it's nicely it's tinted the whole image and we can then use the opacity as a kind of volume control to decide how much of the effect that we want whilst we're here also worth noting if you go to a white layer here then you've got a lightning effect and you can lighten it the it darken it like that and if you go to black then you've got yourself the opposite you've got a darkening effect which you can use okay so click and delete that and what else we can do, can we do now let's go to this one here i'll go to adjustments and go to recolor and we can change the colour, but we'll just leave it on red. So watch what happens now. If I turn up the lightness, there's a point at which the shadows go maximally you know, red. They're losing contrast within the shadows there. And the highlights are pretty light. So now when I turn down the opacity here, and start very much from the bottom, because often in things like this, you just need a tiny, tiny amount. So sometimes a little bit of opacity is all you need to bring the effect out. So I've got colour there into the darks, but not in the lights. I can do the reverse as well. So if I take this down here, turn down the lightness, there's a point at which the highlights become maximally dark. Notice the clouds up here as I move this up and down. There's a point at which you can't tell the difference between the clouds. And again, opacity all the way down. Turn it up a little bit to get a bit of a tint into the highlights, but far less into the shadows. So there we go. That's another effect. Another very, very simple one, which is very useful in things like composites, is I click on the layer here, Control C. I'm going to go to another picture and then Control V, which pastes this as another layer here. Now then, I want to be able to see both pictures at once whilst I align this. So all I do is just turn the opacity down of that top layer. Now I can see both layers. So I click on the Move tool. I can resize this, put it to wherever I want it to be. Um, say, so let's just put it there. Then turn the opacity back up again. Go to a selection brush and select the area I want to include here. So I'll do that very quickly and then if I go to the mask layer and just click on that, that masks it from the selection, Control D, and there you go, I've got the composite of this included in the other picture. So what else can I do? So here's another one which is a bit uh, trickier. Let's go to the this one here again so we can see the effect more clearly. Now then I'm going to hit Control J to duplicate it, change the blend mode now to add, which is going to lighten it. So I got a lightening effect here. Then I click it again, hit Control J and change the blend mode to the opposite of, of add, which is linear burn, which darkens it. So now I'm going to go to the selection brush and select this. There we go, then alt click to go back the other way and there we go. Now then, and I'm just going to turn that then into a mask. So I'm going to click on the mask layer down here again. So what this does, this effectively punches through to the other side, but the control D, so I can't see it. I want to be able to pull the layer 
the, the lightning effect underneath here. So I'll go to the mask and hit Control i and invert it. And that's it's actually poked a hole so I can see that lightning from below. I'll also take that, Control j to duplicate it, and drag it down to, into the bottom layer there. And then Control i to invert that, and then we've got in that darkening around. Here at the moment it looks pretty uh, not very genuine. Um, so I just go to each one of those and turn down the overall opacity. And this is changing the global opacity of that selected area to something that's more sensible. And change this down to something that suits more like that. So I've got that overall effect, but I've brought out the detail more. I can also paint more in this now. So I go to this top one, alt click on that. You can see here that this is selected here to allow the lightning through. So of the lightning on the layer below. So if I want to bring more lightning in, say I want to lighten my clouds there, then I want to paint some dark up into here. So if I get a paintbrush here, make sure it's black. Opacity, you can test it first of all. Uh, that's actually all right. That's just enough to put a bit of lightning. Just want to lighten those clouds up at the top. There you go. You can see the effect. And similarly, I could take the mask down here. And when I paint on here, also in black, I'm painting in shadows. You can see the way that's going to sort of darken the effect that I paint there. So painting in black on the mask in the different areas in both sections. So what else? One more thing. Let's just do a sharpening. So hit Control J twice. Go to the top layer and hit Control I to invert it. Now then, I turn the, the opacity down here. And when I turn this down, when it gets to exactly 50%, it's going to go completely grey because effectively you've got a negative and a positive and you're adding sort of half and half. So they sort of sum to effectively a kind of zero. But now what I can do is put a blur on this and turn the blur up until I see lines. Let's put the blur connected into that top layer. That's better, not on the out on by itself. There we go. Now we can see the lines. And you may guess here, we're doing a high pass filter. So I need to connect these two together. So shift click to the bottom and control G to make that a group. So this is like the high pass layer. So now when I go to blend mode, now I go to a contrast mode, for example, linear light. And here I've got that sharpened. Look at that before and after. Definitely sharper. Anyway, that's it. And hope that was all useful. It shows the variety of things that you can sort of do with the opacity. Don't forget it is a blend mode. And thank you very much for watching.